Hello and welcome back to Drama Investigator. Petty Page has exposed the full name of the person who voices over Spill and the entire team of people who work for the channel on YouTube. First of all, why did she do this? While well, Spill recently exposed themselves in a video after they were getting backlash for being an alleged corporation, what led people to believe that they were a corporation trying to take down drama channels is that there's a big group of people who work on similar YouTube channels with all the same graphics. Spill had addressed in a recent video they had posted who they were, tried to address the drama online, and in fact heaps of people were working on this YouTube channel, and that they apparently don't make much money. Petty Page did some intense investigating and found out that they were actually a corporation trying to take down other drama channels, or at least shift YouTube's algorithm to focus on promoting their content over hard-working individuals. Petty Page had compared hard-working drama channel individuals as local grocery stores, and then Spill as Walmart, because they have a team of highly qualified people People working on their channel, which kind of takes away the goodness, realness and authenticity of YouTube. Spill had also lied about a lot of things in their addressing the drama video, and people were quick to comment about their mistakes on Petty Page's recent video stating, By the way, this was Amazon's business plan in the early dot com boom, to operate at a loss to kill competition, until they can actually make money by monopolising online shopping. So basically they are trying to kill real drama channels through algorithm. Mother effers ripped me apart in the comments when I said that disclosure video was trash and didn't answer any questions and was generally weird. I knew something was off and now here we are. My pinky is in the air lovey. It's one thing that they work for someone. It's totally another thing outright lying. The voice behind Spill is supposed to be a journalist and have integrity to report the truth. She chose to lie. She isn't a journalist in my eyes anymore. If she lies about this simple thing then she is willing to lie about other stuff. Not worth watching a liar that just wants to make money. Spill has also been called out for stealing receipts from smaller drama channels who work incredibly hard to find all of their juicy receipts, and Spill is making huge profit margins off it. Although they had stated in their Who is Spill video that they don't get paid from a lot of their videos, a lot of people are finding that a crack of BS because why would you turn down 700,000 US dollars by not clicking a simple button? Now second of all, Paige had managed to find Spill's personal Twitter account where Spill, or Taylor Barrett, actually states that she runs Spill in her description, and that account is indeed public. In fact, Paige had included screenshots of all of the LinkedIn profiles of all the people who worked on Spill. Now the impact of Petty Page's video hasn't had much of an impact on Spill's channel, as you can see by their social blade, but drama channels, including myself, are really upset over the situation. Rich Lux had taken to his Twitter stating, What's the tea? Do you think Spill is a fraud after she has been exposed? Thoughts? Fans had replied, I think they are one of the least genuine channels on YouTube. Just another big company that took ideas from smaller creators, rehash other people's work in mass marketable ways, mostly by omitting facts to leave the audience neutral. That's not journalism, it's marketing. I can't even refer to Spill as she, since it's more like them, and has been since the beginning. They spill ice cold tea in the most boring way possible, and with the worst soft tone unassuming, I just want a nap voice, and the sipping sound they do grates my nerves. What are your thoughts on Spill's YouTube channel? Let me know in the comments. In more news, Nikita Dragon recently took to her Instagram story, and she complained about her haters. Here's what she had to say. Listen, I am no preacher, but I am a bad bitch, and lately I've been figuring out that I'm tired, I'm exhausted, and I want to fucking give up this lifestyle, having to look like this, lace fronts, full wigs, fucking uh, lashes, tans, brows, nails, all this to get to this is exhausting. Posting pics on Instagram looking cute. This lifestyle, honey, is draining on top of the fact that I'm running businesses, cashing checks, have side hustles and everything else. Oh, did I not mention we have people talking shit? keeping my name in their mouth, keeping my tit, my ass, and every other fucking one of my body parts in their mouth because I clearly am just that much of an obsession to them. They're watching every story. They're watching every fucking post, every little move I do because they want to hate. They want to leave that first comment of negativity, usually the throwing up emoji, but regardless, they want to see us give up. They want to see us fail. And beyond wanting to prove anybody else wrong, I want to prove myself right, that I am strong enough 
to do this, that I can make my dreams come true, that my hustle is gonna be enough to, yes, where I am so fucking tired and exhausted, but I would rather be cashing checks and making coins than sleeping bored, being fucking lazy and not looking fucking cute. And even if I'm not looking cute, bitch, I'm still cashing a check and best fucking believe. But anyways, regardless of all that, I will sleep, not even when I'm dead, but I will sleep when I cash a check, when I'm making my dreams come true. And that's just all I motherfucking have to say. Like, don't be bitter, be better. And that is the preachery of the bitcherosity, the lifestyle that I motherfucking live. And I wanted to give that to you. You can do better and you need to do better for you. Lastly, in more news, Chekiana has addressed the drama surrounding her deleting her Twitter. I had reported in my last video that drama, which I will leave linked down below if you want to go and check that out. Here's what she had to say on her Instagram story regarding the drama. Can I just real quick say thank you to everybody who actively, regularly, even when nothing happens, when it's just a regular Tuesday, a regular Saturday, just to just hit the DMs, comments on the phone, just everyone who's just nice. I appreciate nice people. Now more than ever, I really do appreciate you guys. I truly do. Hey guys, so, oh, oh wait, lighting. I'm standing right here, it's looking good. So real quick, I got a couple like comments and messages. Um, I think talking about my use of the word heathens, which is a little confusing to me, I'm not gonna lie, because I use the word heathens all the time. It's literally just a, throw away funny word for anybody who's just being annoying, including myself. You know, I have heathen tendencies. I just called Dennis a heathen five minutes ago, but it was just like a general term that I was using for people that, the few people that were frustrating me at the time. It's never about all of you guys. It will never, ever be about all of you guys. And I don't want anybody to ever think that if I'm venting about something, it's about the general public. It's definitely, Definitely not. So the second thing that I want to address is there was a girl that I responded to. Her name was at she at she is resting. She said something that was extremely valid. And she said something that I I don't know what that is. She said something that I wholeheartedly agree with. And she's entitled to her opinion. And at the time, someone that I had been going back and forth with literally right before I deactivated my Twitter retweeted that tweet so i just assumed it was me because i was in my feelings and i was going through it and pms is no joke just being i'm just being very honest but the way that i responded honestly she did not deserve that and i want to do something that i could say if but it's happened to me you know when people have publicly come for me and they said some out-of-pocket things i would want them to apologize so i want to take the time to apologize for her because it's not that the criticism isn't welcome it was just i was at the time reading a ton of extremely triggering things and like you guys it's okay to have an opinion i honestly i welcome it um i don't see anything wrong with the healthy dialogue i think it's just when it gets to a point where you see comments like the person's comparing you to a horse or the person is saying you look like a man it's like i can't change those things i can't change the way that i look you can change your wig you know you can change your makeup but like as long as it's not derogatory when you're critiquing something, which she she wasn't, but the person who, who was, was retweeting her tweet. So I just assumed everything was about me, got upset, um, reacted out of anger, you know, and I'm human, you know, I'm just being very honest. I'm human and it happens, but she didn't deserve that. And I want to apologize again to her. And I also want to apologize to any of you guys who may have felt like offended by that because that's not what I represent. That's not what I stand for. And, you know, moving forward, I want to continue to express myself in a way where it's not reacting out of anger. So I'm going to do better at that. And I think that being, you know, being in Twitter jail for a little bit will help. But um, yeah, I have to be the example that I want. I don't think I've ever had anybody say something really derogatory towards me and apologize for it. I, I don't think they have, but I want to be the example in the community. That's all for this investigation. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell. My social media will be linked down below and I'll see you guys in our next investigation.